Yeah, for a little. Starts. I don't think they got bored. Katie, can I play your song? How about the sound of silence? If anyone starts playing the bongos, I'm leaving. Thank you very much for talking to me today. No, thanks for coming in. Thanks. Um, my first question is really, where do we pick off, start off, sorry, in this film, and what's brought all these characters back together? Good question. We know this. We know the answer to this one. Good one. We know this one. It's, uh, it's about nine months later. Nine months uh, of being at university for Simon and Will. Nine months of working for um, Neil. And Jay is in Australia where he's gone to meet to see his uncle, his dad's cousin, and sort of he's working out there. And he sends an email back saying, I'm having the best time of my entire life. I'm sleeping with endless models and I'm a top DJ earning loads of money. And it kind of kicks off there, really. Coming off to like the record-breaking success of the first film, what's the driving force behind doing the next one? It's so rare. I mean, yeah. we've both had careers in television before we did the in-between. It's so rare that you work on anything that makes any kind of connection with people, that people, you know, meant, you know, most people want to say, oh, well, I'll tell you what was wrong with that, or I didn't like that. Whereas the in-between, I mean, it really has struck a chord with so many different people, and they love it. And there was this kind of odd responsibility that we yeah. felt that we, you know, we had really killed them off in our heads after the last movie, but we felt this responsibility from the public, really, that they, you know, yeah. there was another film, if we could do another film, if we had one in us, we, we had to try and make it happen. Yeah. People looked sad when they thought <laughs> they weren't doing any more, and he got to the stage, was like, this is, seems a bit weird, because I'm not like I'm doing anything else. Yeah. It feels weird not to be. I was very happy when I heard this. Yeah, oh, that's really nice of you, thank yeah, you, yeah. Absolutely. I know when, I, when the first series of The Inbetweens came out, I was 17. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, they kind of... I watched that thinking, this is brilliant, this is exactly like me. Oh, wow. And now, being a bit older, thinking, oh, 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 oh my Lord, that, is, that was me. <laughs> um, how do you sort of interplay taking that sort of original relatability that you had with the characters into this bigger, better sort of style? You... Well, I guess I think w when we did the first film, we talked about that and the idea of scale. And I think we felt like this holiday situation, which felt totally realistic, was still about scaling up in one sense, but also we used a lot of the... Um, bit more emotional, a bit more emotional push than you'd have. But really for us, it's always been about four friends and friendship and the language that friends use. And so at the heart of this film, although it's in Australia and there's huge you know, vistas and beaches and the Sydney Opera House, fundamentally it's about the four of them talking to each other as mates. And so that, that core, you know, it's always, it's always trying to stay I the think, same, really. Yeah, and also, I mean, we've been very lucky just because, you know, we chose these characters at that point in their life. I mean, a lot of people always talk about how, you know, when a sitcom goes to a movie or a feature length, they always take the characters and send them on holiday. Well, actually, this is exactly what the characters would do when they were, you know, at different junctions at 18, at 19, you go on a gap year, you go on a European holiday. So we very, you know, it's not like taking the staff of a department store to the Costa del Sol. So then what would you say you wanted audiences to sort of take away from this film, having seen it? I li I'd like people to watch that and go, I loved watching that film like I loved watching the first series. We, we, we watched the first series when we did this film. We've thought a lot about what we did right in that first series and gone back to a lot of those sort of original thoughts and ideas we had whilst trying to scale it up. And I'd, I'd love to be able just to come away and think, I love that. I'm sad it's over, but I'm glad it happened. You know, and that's really what I'd like. <laughs> yeah, I'm sad it's over, I'm glad it's happened. Yeah, it's like uh, a lot of and my, a lot of my the, marriages. They're <laughs> <laughs> well, they're laughing, laughing all the way through that, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the thing we also weren't quite aware of before the first movie was you get the cinematic experience doesn't have to be yeah. an incredible shot or, you know, just have to be that. It is sharing, you know, a moment with 400 people in a room. So, you know, I think people thinking, I'm glad I watched that with another 400 people. And, it, you know, it was just a contagious, infectious room. The laughter was enjoyable. I'd like, I, I like people to think I might recommend people come back and do that and I'll probably join them as well because I enjoyed yeah. it so much. Hello, darling. I can't see you. Tip the lid forward. How's that? Move it up. Right. Ah.